And in addition to their house in Lincoln, right north of it, they owned uh, a farmhouse that was actually on um, sacred Indian ground. And they, it was called Pahak, which was, I believe, a Pawnee. Um, and this would, turned out to be a, a fairly significant piece of land for me. Um, my first session, Zen intensive practice period, uh, where I had my first breakthrough, uh, occurred there with doing a session, an intensive Zen meditation, with Katagiri Roshi. And the moment, uh, there, there were only about five or six of us, but we were doing this extended several day meditation practice. And uh, on about the third day, I had gotten into this stance of witnessing. And it was just pure, constant, transpersonal witnessing. And uh, awareness of true self. And uh, Roshi found out about this in, in our face-to-face -face, uh, meetings. <clears throat> and knew that it was very close to a kind of ultimate understanding. And many schools would accept that. And of course, it was another level that does exist. I mean, it is a reality. And it's higher than uh, all previous components of the psyche. So as I was in this state, <clears throat> um, Katakiri deliberately said, the witness is the last stand of the ego. And it just snapped. Um, Zen calls at the bottom, the bucket breaks. The whole sense of there being a self on this side of your face, looking at the world out there, dissolves. And there's just the world out there. There's just what's occurring moment to moment. And you are one with everything that's occurring. You don't look at the mountain. You are the mountain. You don't feel the earth. You are the earth. Um, and it's this radical non-dual awareness that is in virtually all the traditions maintained to be the highest state and condition of consciousness and reality. Um, and I stayed in that state for several days. And it was um, a truly profound awakening for me. Um, and I will never, you know, forget, forget that. The, one of the interesting things is that Amy and I chose to get married with a small group of people at this Pahak Indian land. <clears throat> and it was on the Platte River that goes through the actual territory that Lewis and Clark discovered. And so in one of the local towns, they actually had a museum that was devoted to local history in the area. And under a glass-covered plate, <clears throat> I found a uh, hand drawing by Lewis on the Lewis and Clark expedition of Pahak, this actual land um, that I had my first awakening that I was married at, and seeing this drawn, you know, by this ancient relative of mine, was uh, just a chilling experience. It, it was something really profound about the connection there, and so that it just turned out to be a really significant piece of property uh, in my early life. <clears throat> um, and uh, went out there often, and uh, it was a beautiful, beautiful piece of land. And you really could, I don't want to get too magical or anything, but you really could feel some kind of energy to the place. And um, it was up on a sort of a raised part of the land, which gave the highest view around. So you could see the Platte River 
in many directions. Um, and I spent a lot of time out there hiking and meditating and um, just sort of absorbing it. 